Uh, this is your Houston chiropractor, Dr. Gregory Johnson. I'm with my fellow Cairo Trust member, Dr. Stephen Razor. Right. Razor, excuse me. And he's come all the way down here from uh, South Carolina to experience the Johnson chiropractic technique. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to tell you what is the Johnson Technique and what it is not and demonstrate the three-dimensional techniques that I utilized. I went to Palmer College of Chiropractic in Davenport, Iowa and I learned Palmer Diversified, Gonstead, Thompson, Pure Steel Wagon, uh, Nemo, and a whole bunch of different techniques that over the, my 38 years of practice, I utilized some of those techniques. For instance, the drop pieces here was initially done by J. Clay Thompson, who I took classes from personally while he was still alive. And then I got introduced into biophysics with Dr. Dan Murphy and, and uh, Dr. Harrison, Don Harrison, who actually started biophysics and I applied the three-dimensional Cartesian coordinate system of the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis into what I now call the Johnson chiropractic technique. And you guys were really brutal on Dr. Reiser's video yesterday, but remember he did that without any training whatsoever on this manual spinal decompression technique which adjusts the spine on the y-axis so today i'm going to actually train him how to do it he's going to do it again this evening and y'all be much nicer in your comments and and just wait till you see the difference when someone actually knows how to do it when they've been trained because teaching teaching somebody to do this takes time effort and energy and money so uh, we're going to start the journey here with what the Johnson chiropractic technique is and is not. First and foremost, it is a three-dimensional biomechanical analysis of the spine by viewing the patient's posture. So I'm going to have you close your eyes for me, Dr. Reiser, and flex your head forward and backwards, please, sir. Much better range of motion today, though, especially in extension. Now see, he's still a little forward in the z-axis. Not a whole lot, but a little bit. And he's a little translated to the left on the x-axis in his cervical thoracic spine region. As you might remember, he has a fairly significant scoliosis, which we saw in the positive Adams test that we did on him yesterday. And the curve is to the convexity to the right in the upper thoracic spine and then back to the left in the thoracolumbar spine region. Um, so he brought his x-rays and everything in which I looked at yesterday and then we began his first adjustment yesterday he got another one yesterday afternoon this will be his third time and we're going to start off with this one this morning the manual spinal decompression on the y-axis I just talked to our manufacturer of our tables Hill Laboratories up in North Carolina this morning and we're getting close to having a fully functional manual spinal decompression table that we're going to put Team Ring Dinger on the side of it too. So the only people that I will license to do Ring Dingers will have to be taught by me and they'll have to pass the examination that I'm going to give at the end of the seminar before I'll even license anybody to do these. Okay, Dr. Reiser, just breathe through your nose with your right big toe. There you go. Now, adjusting with this, it's not just putting a towel around somebody's neck and they're yanking on it. It is a feel for the muscular ligaments, tension, and the range of motion. Our job in the chiropractic adjustment is to take the joint to its fullest range of motion within the integrity of the ligament. We breach the paraphysiological space and take the joint to its maximum range of motion within the integrity of the ligament. That's where you hear the cavitation or the cracking noise, which is a nitrous gas bubble that explodes inside the synovial joint when we open those up. So you notice I'm using the hill airdrop table. 
in just about a quarter short on the right today. That probably tightens up a little bit in your little back and thighs. Okay, not bad though, huh? So I'm adjusting his SI joint, P to A and lateral 45 degrees, superior to inferior. And then his sacrum, straight P to A and also superior to inferior on the Z axis. Same thing on the left SI joint. I'm adjusting along the line that that big SI joint articulates with the sacrum, the ilium and the sacrum, therefore sacroiliac joint. And then when I get into the lumbar spine, it's straight PA. And then once you move up the spine, you notice the angles of my hand and my arm change because I am, what the Johnson technique is also is specifically moving those joints through their normal range of motion in the lines of the facet joints or zigapoff seal joints. Now he's even. This should have felt a little easier. In adjusting his cervical spine P to A, the facet joints are at a slightly upward angle so when adjusting the cervical spine you have to do it with a knife edge and you have to do it along the lines of the actual facet joints okay let's turn you on your back now please sir We are going to be doing seminars in the coming years. Slide down this way a little bit with your arms straight out to the sides, palms up. On the Johnson Chiropractic Technique and the Texas Chiropractic Association has invited me to do them through the TCA, which can get license renewal in all 50 states for chiropractors who take the course. And our table should be done and patented and FDA 510K on it within the next year. All this stuff takes time and effort and money. Let's face that way for me for just a second. So you notice I don't just adjust the spine, I adjust the extremities as well. Because what's part of the Johnson chiropractic technique also is proprioceptive neurological information goes from each of the joints into the cerebellum and then exits the cerebellum and goes back with efferent going through into the brain as afferent impulses exiting the brain coming out to the various joints and body parts as efferent so even adjusting digits like this I am eliciting a neuroproprioceptive bombardment into the cerebellum. There we go. There. And you've heard me say this before. Don't try this at home if you're not a licensed professional chiropractor. Okay, let's stand right here. And let's have another look here now. Forward and backwards for me, please, sir. Boy, look at that. Square it off. And this is also part of the Johnson chiropractic techniques, a very important part of it, because I'm mirror imaging the patient's biomechanical configuration. I'm adjusting the atlas on the X axis, which reverberates between the occiput and C2 and settles down in the proper facet joint alignment of occiput C1 and C2. And it should feel a much smoother range of motion after I do that. Mm -hmm. Did you? Yes. Yep, take a look. Right down the gut. So I'm going to be training Dr. Riser on how to do these techniques today. He's going to adjust me again today. And you'll see the difference once a chiropractor has had a proper education on how to do these things. And quit being so brutal on his first one. <laughs>
because they're not disabled the comments this is your houston chiropractor dr gregory johnson coming to you from advanced chiropractic relief in houston texas with dr riser also a fellow chiro trust member in south carolina yes, sir. and it's been an honor for us to be able to treat him this week we'll see y'all soon